We'll kick off the show by reflecting on the opening round of the Women's Six Nations. Fiona Hayes is with us. Good evening. Hey, Joe. How are you? Very well. Have you got music going there? Have we got music going here? What happened there? That was us? Sorry, it was Peter. Don't mind. <laughs> don't mind uh, Don't mind that, Fiona. Sorry, that was, that was on our end. So, opening weekend, France 38, Ireland 17. A famous win for Scotland um, against Wales on, on Welsh soil, 20 points to 18. And then, predictably enough, Italy nil, England 48 on the Sunday. So let's talk Ireland in front of 15,000 away in France. France 38, Ireland 17. Context is all important here, I think, for the conversation we might be about mm-hmm. to have. It was Ireland 3, France 53 in Cork last year. Yeah, that's spot on, Joe. We spoke, uh, I think, a lot before the the Six Nations kicked off, um, you know, what would be a positive from the Six Nations. But, um, and that's probably winning a couple of games. But I think this start that Ireland had is definitely a positive. Um, Delighted with how they fronted up and, and, went after France at times, obviously um, different style altogether as well, Joe. Um, if you look at that Scotland game last year, which was the last game of the Six, uh, the six Nations, they kicked um, in play 11 balls, even against Wales in the first round, they kicked and played 10 times. We saw a very different style, 28 times. Ireland kicked the ball and play really at uh, 25 of them were kind of long or off the pitch so possession if you're looking at a game like that you have to have a really really good defence and I thought Ireland were absolutely brilliant at times defensively they really forced France into big errors um, so really good start I think in this tournament especially over there with 15,000 and to get the couple of tries at the end was brilliant as well for people who didn't see the game, it's no exaggeration to say for the first half, any time Ireland had possession in their own half, the plan A, B and C was give it to Nicole Fowley, the out half, in the pocket and she kicked the ball as uh, deep as she could and then Ireland focused on a fairly um, uh, together and, mm. and, and coherent uh, kick chase as a line. And that was just the plan. That, that, that was it. The coaches obviously looked at the skill set, looked at the team and decided that's our best bet here. Yeah, and that's it. And it's the uh, first year of a new uh, coaching staff, you know, new defence coach in there, Danner. You've got the new head coach and obviously not a lot of time to work together, Joe, but where you can work a lot on is that defensive area, that mindset they would have seen from last year in that Scotland game in particular. There was 40 missed tackles. Yeah. Um, the last game, you know, that was just absolutely heartbreaking. I think in this game, there was 17 missed tackles against a really strong French outfit. They made them, you know, I think France had 34 hand earners and I really believe that was down to a lot of the Irish defence, a lot of the pressure and I suppose what they were looking at is going after France moreover if, if their defence could get those turnovers and trying to get that counter-attack together. That didn't happen a lot massively because um, obviously just uh, France where they turned over the ball was probably too deep for Ireland and they were they were wrecked at times to be fair to them from that defensive effort. But just overall, I think it was a good start to the competition in reality you like anyone involved in women's rugby right now would would say yes you're probably not going to go over and win over in France just the way things are and you would be very very happy with those little green shoots that we saw in this performance yeah the defensive aspects you mentioned new defensive coach there was a real physicality about Ireland they put in several and I I mean several dominant hits Mm. against the French and then you know, there were moments, because obviously, look, they're going to be under pressure against one of the best sides yeah. in the world. There were moments um, in their own 22, even on their own try line, where I think it's fair to say over the last year or two, they would have conceded. And on a couple of occasions, they withstood the French pressure and they, and they tackled for each other. And there was there was probably a better organisation. So, again, short window working together. These things are massively positive because we're looking at this game uh, through the prism of their home games against Scotland yep. and Wales and Italy. And that defence against against that opposition is going to be difficult uh, for those teams to, to, to get on top of Ireland. 
Yeah, definitely. And that defense, if if you if they can bring that same intensity, that that same aggression, we saw in that um, Italy England game. England upped that in the second half. They probably weren't great in the first half, yeah. but I thought England defensively absolutely blasted the Italians back at times, especially at the breakdown, and were able to get tries out wide a lot because they had worked hard in that internal area. And I think this team are looking at building towards that. So once you get your defensive system, yes, they do have an attack in policy and I don't think it's going to be the same type of structured game with Italy or Wales or Scotland at home as we saw I don't think the kicks from hand are going to be yes they will exit correctly but I, I, I don't think it will be just constantly kick that ball away I think they'll definitely try out the attack but from a defensive point of view to have this set up to see the want the the huge hits I mean you'd players like Aoife Dalton I thought she was absolutely outstanding we watched her all competition last year Joe and she was in a 13 and I, I've watched her at that AIL level and she she's brilliant but just having her in at 12 it just changed those dynamics straight away you had Eve Higgins they built up a really good partnership together and her at 12 defensively was massive the decision making around when to make those hits Eve away for it back row it just seems like they're building these combinations now yes I'd love to see a little bit more on attack because they did have a good bit of possession but it's 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 certainly you know a good start against this French team and I would imagine when they go into the next game Italy and RDS we're going to see a lot more of ball and hand stuff from Ireland and they can back that up with that same defensive hits again then really rattle the Italians Okay so you're, you've said it twice there you do think that the lack of uh, passing the lack of, of, of running rugby that was very much Scott Bermond looking at the French and saying well we're away from home kicking game pressure game that's us you think he, he has seen enough in the skill set that he is going to take the shackles off against the, the weaker opposition or the, the opposition on a par with Ireland? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, as I said, I spoke about those 40 missed tackles in Scotland and he would have got that group together. And yes, they had a couple of games after that, but that was kind of a running theme that we saw yeah. in that Six Nations that there were. So that's something I suppose this team would have spoke about. So he's gotten them together and obviously Danner's come in and they've decided that defensively, you know, this first game, especially against France, that they're they're going to let them come at them, really test them and, and see how they can battle. Because when we talk about France, we talk about that big, huge pack and Ireland were absolutely brilliant at times. Scrums were were super as well. Um, I think they lost a couple, but that was just near the end of the game. It's just a slight area of concern for me is the, is the line out. And we spoke about it, you know, a lot last year as well, um, because... Neve Jones, and it's not the hooker, but Neve Jones was absolutely superb all game or in the loose. She was everywhere. She was hitting rocks. She was making tackles. Um, she's on every single, you know, pundits team of the of the week. She was just super. But out of nine lineouts, uh, they lost four. So that against, you know, the likes of Italy, Wales, they can't seem to be able to fall, form the mall because I know they've they've really good mall once they get it together. So that's something this Irish team are definitely going to have to look at if it's shortening down the line out, if it's lessening the movement, they're going to have to do something because having Neve in there, and it, as I said, it's not always the, the hooker's fault, but having her there is an absolute must with this team, but it's also a must to win those games. Sit piece has to be key, so they're going to have to trust find what they need to do to get those wins. And don't get me wrong, France are brilliant in the air and, you know, they have defensive jumpers everywhere in the lineup. So it is hard. They will be harder than a lot of teams, but it's somewhere when you come away from that big win, because I was super impressed, but it's just a line I'd like to see improve. Yeah. Um, it'd be wrong to say defence was perfect as well, obviously. I mean, Rome not being built in a day and all that, for instance, and, and tries came of it. Uh, depending on which jargon we want to use, rugby obviously has its fair share of jargon, but the pillar or the person next to a yeah. rook just can't desert their post. And Ireland had a habit of doing that and eventually France noticed and took advantage. And you'd chalk that up for, you know, for all the great defensive work that they must have done and the intent that they showed. That's a real basic. I mean, that'd be what you'd be uh, working on with underage kids as well. Whoever's right next to that rook, you do not go anywhere. And Ireland did and were punished for it. Yeah, look, and you know, no better woman than Bourdain to, to spot that. And I'd say they might have looked at that um, in, in you know, from a couple of players going forward because you, you you can see sometimes, right, if, you, if, if you're playing against these big teams and you know, especially France, they have like lethal wingers and we know they, what they can do with their back three. So they like to get the ball wide first phase. So Ireland are constantly, I suppose, to keep 
to, to keep that defensive system. They're moving, moving, moving. But yes, that pillar has to stay till the ball is gone. And that's just a little tweak, but it is certainly an area that they need to tighten up. They need to be able to, to bring the line speed and bring that shift to get out wide in time. But also you have to look after that internal that can't leave till the ball is gone. And I suppose that's just a, a little system error that you know is easily fixable. And they look at that footage and it's definitely, if you're looking at Italy, you're, you're certainly looking at how at how that was pulled apart and you'd probably be trying to do the same thing because yeah. it's that nine in particular picking and going if that pillar follows them you're in big trouble there yes yeah, so the pillar let the nine go you stay where you are exactly yeah uh, the, the, that's the, the system yeah the second round of fixtures pretty interesting now in that Scotland won away in Wales for the first time and so Scotland are getting their act together and professionalism is now in its second or third year and beyond when it comes to England of course but second or third year in these countries and we saw the jump in Wales last year and Maybe we're seeing something similar with Scotland and that's going to be tested with uh, France in Scotland. England are England and they've won this tournament five years in a row and frankly, they're ruining this tournament. I mean, there's no, no, <laughs> no way about it. Like the tournament does have an England problem. They're just too bloody good. <laughs> so they have Wales and then Ireland have Italy. Now again, to emphasise, Ireland are targeting these three home games. They have Italy, Wales and Scotland at home. So this is the really positive year for Ireland. It's the year of opportunity as opposed to when they have England and France coming to Ireland and they're away to the other three. That's always really difficult. So they have Italy at home first. They're targeting three wins. They're targeting third place, which gets them into a World Cup. And obviously mm. they missed out in the World Cup uh, last time around, very painfully. Uh, what chance have they against Italy here? Joe, I, I, I think they have an absolute brilliant chance. I watched Italy. Um, yes, uh, so England were down to, um, had a red card early on in the game. Um, and Could, could we know, think Italy... about doing that for every game that England, <laughs> England just play with 14? Would they agree to that? <laughs> uh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, Italy done well, I suppose, for the first half. They really went after England, but it's like it's, it's this English team. It's like they almost woke up and said, here, hold on a minute. In the second half, they absolutely ripped it up, especially out wide. And that's their ability. It's their gain lines. Their forwards get you over the gain line. And it's very simple rugby as well. It's, it's nothing crazy. It's just they have beautiful players who, who understand the system they're playing, I suppose. But look, I think this Italy, um, I think it's a very winnable game for this Irish team. I really do, especially at home. Um, it's on up in the RDS. Um, the only, as I said, the only thing is they need to sort out that lineup because Italy had, in, especially in that first half, uh, had a couple of steals of of the English lineup. They went after them there, and they'd probably be looking at doing the same with Ireland. But uh, uh, defensively, um, we saw a couple of tries Ireland scored it, it, towards the end of the game. But I, I think when I watched that system, uh, especially in the second half. Ireland's attack it was almost a confidence thing Joe it was mm. you know you could talk about systems and I thought they were a bit lateral yes France defensively were good in the first half but it, it's it's almost a mindset with Ireland and I think they will be going into this game really confident and especially with the, with scoring those two tries towards the end of the game as well and look as I said Italy I've always felt it's it's a 50-50 game they've been coming out of top in recent years but I haven't seen an Irish defensive performance like that no. and I think that's going to lift confidence levels with them as well. Yes. I mean, a, a final thought, it feels like such a tone setter for this tournament for Ireland. The confidence levels have been decimated over the last couple of years. Yep. And obviously winning the XV3 uh, was, was, I mean, not so much about the, the standard of rugby in the autumn, mm -hmm. but just team together, a reset, a real focus on the culture, which, you know, Dorothy Wall was on the show last week, said wasn't yep. right. And now, now, I guess we saw that in evidence away to France where they were resolute and they were fighting for each other like a defeat at home to Italy could just puncture that, you know, and they're looking at, God, it's this same old story. Whereas a win, like massive, this just feels like a huge game for Irish rugby going forward. Huge game. Yeah, it is huge. And like, I, I if I was if I was looking at last week, Joe, and and you know, even if it was the if it was the same scoreline that came out, I, and Ireland hadn't defended like they did, I would be going, okay, it could be a tighter game. But looking at how they defended, if they can shut down the Italians, this Irish team has X factor. We've seen it. Yes, against France, we probably didn't get the the ball to Parsons in space, which we'd like to do a little bit more. Um, you know, there's there's just so much X factor. Eve Higgins an attack and. I 
I think if they can defend like that, especially against Italy, I think on turnover ball, we will see a lot more from Irish attack and at home as well with the crowd behind him. So I'm super confident about it. Okay, well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we'll talk soon. Fiona Hayes, thanks very much. Cheers, Joe. Monday Night Rugby on Off the Ball.